This, the Samsung Galaxy S, is essentially a 4-inch screen Android 2.1 smartphone with Samsung's let's see how close we can get our front end to look like the Apple iPhone without being sued, TouchWish 3 interface. As a result, you either get the best of both worlds, an uh, iPhone and Android, or a bit of a clutchy mismatch, depending on your point of view. The Galaxy S itself weighs almost nothing, 118 grams or a paltry 87 grams if you take the battery out. This is good because it's light and bad because the device feels so insubstantial that with the ultra cheap, glossy fingerprint magnet plastic, it looks, and I'm not the first to say this, like a, a cheap iPhone knockoff, sorry. Reminiscent of the Nokia X6, the battery cover is incredibly flimsy. This doesn't feel like it's from a, a £450 device. However, turn it on, the Samsung Galaxy S's biggest strength becomes obvious. It's super AMOLED screen. At four inches, almost everything's a pleasure, and it's genuinely usable, even in direct sunlight, even if it's nowhere near as clear as the iPhone 3GS and the non-touch Nokias. Volume and lock buttons adorn the tapering sides, but they do take some getting used to. The first few times I went to try unlocking the screen, this happened. <laughs> the Galaxy S is very droppable. One of one advantage of the new slab-sided iPhone 4, perhaps? There's 3.5mm audio and micro USB on top and a plain camera glass on the back. Along with a mono speaker demoed here. As with other recent devices, when you place it on a flat surface, you effectively block the speaker off altogether, which isn't good. Continuing my spinal tap joke from the previous show, the volume here goes one better to 15. I'll stop with the tap references now. There's no camera shutter button, alas. Everything's done by the capacitive touchscreen. And as with many other touchscreen models, you tap on something to focus, and then you tap a separate icon on the side of the screen to capture up to a five megapixel image. It's not that elegant in practice, and I miss several shots by forgetting to tap accurately on the main subject. There's also no flash here, by the way. Not a huge loss given the poor performance in low light anyway, but worth noting. Speaking of the camera, one of the biggest benefits of the new Samsung phones is their ability to capture HD video, or at least 720p. Here's a demo. So this is test HD footage, 1280 by 720p on the Samsung Galaxy S, listening for audio quality, video quality. There's no pre-focus, no focusing of any kind, uh, and also the audio video sync. How's it doing? which looks pretty impressive. Samsung have opted for the same system as on the Nokia N86 being used to shoot this and the N8 and simply made the video camera focus a metre or so away and then use as much depth of field as possible to ensure everything else, closer and further away, is still acceptable. One oddity was that when trying to play the captured videos on the phone itself, I initially saw just a weird slow motion effect. After a few minutes, I tried again with success. Maybe there's some thumbnailing and caching that has to go on in the background. GPS and navigation worked fine with Google's free route guidance, aided and abetted by Wi-Fi positioning. And as with Ovi Maps and Nokia's, having free voice navigation is a major selling point, in my opinion. In terms of software, it's the basic Android 2.1 applications and a few Samsung additions. The web browser doesn't support Flash, but it will when Android 2.2 arrives later in the year. There's full multi-touch wherever you need it, including this truly excellent virtual QWERTY keyboard with the option of either standard prediction or swipe, both of which work well. Seven home screens give plenty of room for shortcuts and widgets. I like both of the main inclusions here. That's daily briefing, weather, stocks and news, and feeds and updates, latest Facebook, Twitter and MySpace updates. They do note that this latter isn't a replacement for a full Twitter client. The Android market, also included here, of course, is your best bet for a number of free Twitter replacements. Tap on applications and you're into the iPhone-like side-scrolling icons, but hey, it's better than the usual up-scrolling Android list, so I'm not complaining. Our Deco eBook is an Apple iBooks clone and includes hooks into online directories to get more titles. It works really well and I lost myself for a bit in Sherlock Holmes. Allshare is a DLNA client for sharing and playing media over home network. And nothing I've got here is this up to date, but it's still nice to have. Layer is an augmented reality client, and I was disappointed it's not fully functioning here. At first, endlessly looking for server information like this, and then next time you try crashing completely. Memo is a pretty little note taker, though I don't believe there's a way to export the notes en masse. You have to beam them out one by one. Mini diaries and note taker come photo logger, with the option to post photos and comments to Facebook or MySpace if desired. 
my files as a decent file manager with the really unintuitive quirk that files on micro SD are shown under a virtual subfolder in the internal mass memory, which is itself also called SD card. Why does Samsung do these things to us? Social Hub is included just to look the same as on the wave, I think, here with shortcut to the relevant mobile websites, all a bit half-hearted. Thinkfree is an office suite that, like my files, shows documents on card as hidden inside a subfolder. It is a full editing suite, though seemingly an early version. My bog standard test .doc file here just produced this error dump. Uh, not quite ready for mission critical use this bit yet. Finally, write and go, as it sounds, is a quick way to fire a quick status update off to both Facebook and Twitter at the same time. Again, the great text input and swipe make composing text a real pleasure. Samsung's media playback software likes microSD a whole lot better than its file-based apps, thankfully. I was able to load on and play every single test video I had. The Galaxy S has the widest range of codecs I've ever seen on a mobile device. Very impressive. Here's a bit of clap for you. She's with the speaker up to uh, max. Music playback was also great over the in-ear headphones provided, but these don't let you adjust tracks. To skip ahead or back, you have to bring down the notifications bar from the screen top, as here, or, or go to music player itself. Battery life through the test period was just about acceptable. It's tough to test when you're playing with the phone so much. Uh, reports from around the web do suggest the same, though. You'll have to charge it every night without fail. That big bright screen and mobile data being the two big power drainers. So, a mixed bunch of pros and cons then, as on every other device that comes through my hands. In terms of raw functionality, the Galaxy S shines. Uh, even the badly placed mono speaker didn't dampen my enthusiasm too much. With the help of a few choice applications from the Android market and a little setup time, this is potentially one of the best phones in the world. The only caveat for all this, and it's potentially a big one, is the issue of style. Bring this out in public and you'll have far more people saying, is that an iPhone? Uh, oh, no, it's just a cheap plastic copy. Than complimenting you on buying a top Android flagship, which isn't really fair. But Samsung, you've only got yourself to blame. The materials used here are just, just plain wrong for the customers you hope to attract. Anyway, this is the Samsung Galaxy S. Ah, OK, Symbian Foundation is a place to be if you want to make serious software for, for Symbian. And this is our aim. So we joined. And almost what we got in only in this kind of short time frame was amazing. So we really appreciate working with these guys. Well, we are not quite sure when it will be the right time, but uh, we, we are considering sometimes. If you promise that half of the cost would uh, increase dramatically the sales, we would definitely do. But unfortunately, we don't believe in this. Um, we will do some trials and um, we, we will definitely see over the next uh, weeks that we try to put some software cheap to make it cheaper to see um, upcoming, let's say, better sales. Um, but in the end, um, when you see our products, uh, we always update and upgrade our products in a regular time frame. And that is what many companies around in our ecosystem are not willing to do. We have a service hotline. We have a, we have a user database where the people are in and they can communicate with us in our forums um, and all these kind of, let's say, activities that cost money. So um, to be a solid company and to do solid software, yeah. you have to have a profitability. When we came up with, a, with Mobile Shell 5.0, which is a great concept and will give new opportunities for device manufacturers and uh, chipset manufacturers to use interface software, um, we thought about launching it on the market in July, but um, about two months ago we, we could easily see that this kind was, uh, of idea of timing was a bit too ambitious. So we started to take the existing Symbian software where we was almost ready and said, okay, we, we put it down to a 3.5 version, which is really nice and everyone likes in our company, and to put it on the market because there's a need on the market and we have the right software, why we should wait until we have the 5 version. So 
Now Simbin is a head of Android and some other platforms. Um, OF Shell 5.0 has a different engine and it's based on all our experience we have uh, um, collected over the last years. So I cannot guarantee that we that the settings someone did for 3.5 will continue on, on, on version 5.0. Unfortunately, I cannot guarantee this. But you're confident that it will be worth the effort ah, to upgrade? That's for sure, yes. Um, for sure, for the next versions, we will definitely have. Most likely, yes. Um, there's always a time, short time frame where we have to check that all yeah. the software works perfect. But we um, definitely is our aim that our software will run on all upcoming touchscreen devices from the beginning. On all available platforms, software somehow available for TVs, on, on iPhone, on, on, even on Blackberry, on, on WebOS. Um, but however it, it works, we think that um, from the turnover, the best will be Android platform in 2011. Um, we see that it might be followed by Simbin, which is definitely upcoming again. And uh, it might be, let's say, our sales on, on iPhone will be good as well. We're not sure at this moment, at this stage, how much we put inside this kind of development on iPhone for long. Be visible on, in, a, in an iPhone store. App Store is very, very difficult. However, when we launched our mobile uh, SPB TV, um, we have uh, reached uh, in several app stores worldwide number one in download for several weeks. It was very, very good. And reached uh, user numbers more than uh, one million um, in, uh, in last month. So it's, uh, and it's still ongoing. So um, iPhone is an amazing, amazing platform. And, but it's, um, for a developer, unpredictable. Okay, it is amazing. Another amazing fact is, it is it's good. It's really good. It's like there are still a lot of devices available in the market. So when I go to market, I cannot see these kind of numbers of devices. But sales is still there and sales is good. Yeah. And we see that, that sales are shifting to Asia and uh, Western Europe. Yeah. And uh, US is very low, but Western Europe is still okay. And Asia is very strong upcoming. Because there are still, let's say, enough Windows mobile phones in shops. Yeah, we have we have confirmed that uh, we will be on Windows Phone with some applications. SBTB will be for sure one of the first applications yeah. um, for Windows uh, 7 and I, Windows Phone 7. And I, I think it will run very well in, the, in, in this kind of environment. It's not static. It's, it's continuously growing. Um, now we have about 150 channels. And um, last time when we spoke, it was maybe 110 or so. Okay. So by the end of this year, we try to have definitely more than 200 channels. Oh, that's quite interesting because I'm using different phones um, and I'm using phones without any software from the SPB um, to, um, to find out the native uh, user behavior. Okay. So yeah. um, I, eight weeks ago, I had for two weeks a Nokia. Um, in 97, I today I'm using uh, Nexus One, okay. uh, but definitely, for sure, I'm always happy when I'm back to phones with mobile shell, and then I really appreciate the usage of uh, the usability <laughs> of <laughs> SPB mobile shell. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, Sebastian. Thanks.